December 27th, 2.11 p.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of a murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I am swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? S swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you could do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy, you guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. That's exactly why I don't like Larry. He's just... <sighs> Anyways, hello guys and welcome to TG on the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about open games, and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we finished up the second trial of this case, and we may have just learned what actually transpired on Gord Lake that night. And in this episode, Edgeworth recently revealed to us that he thinks he may have murdered someone. And so that's going to be a huge trouble for us in court. Anyways, as usual, running gags, Charlie. Mia's favorite potted plant. Its name is Charlie. Maya's gotten the knack of watering it lately. Charlie's been perking up these days. And then the poetry window. Looks like it's cleaning day again at the hotel across the way. I hear they're planning a second branch outside the city. I can see the bellboy adjusting the angle of that screwdriver in the drawer. And finally, the movie poster. Maya bought in a post, brought in a poster of the Steel Samurai the other day. We had a big fight over whether to put it up or not. I know she's just waiting for a chance to sneak it up there on the wall. So everything is normal, except, let me check this. Difficult looking legal books stand in a formidable row, they mock me. So it's all basically the same text from before. Most of slipped out of my hand, then my foot hurt too. So we have no other choice but to talk to Larry. Today is trial. Larry, you really helped us out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> Seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty serious. We're suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. But from where I was sitting, Edworth seemed pretty edgy. Huh. <laughs> I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But, what I do know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right Nick? Yeah, you Larry. Not me? But why you Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah, why me Nick? Oof, enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true, but when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey Larry, what is he talking about? Huh? Uh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. <sighs> okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story t today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It's the beginning of spring. Fourth grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? 
I won't talk for this part because it's kind of dramatic and I don't think I'm really up to task to voice act it well enough to make it as dramatic as it should be, so I'll just let you guys read it. It's a sweet story. Edgeworth's goals. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my dad. A famous defense attorney. And then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. It's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, man manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. Well, that's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. 
I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick. So is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Aw, oh, Nick. 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very may well be. Er, very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some evidence that I don't, no longer need. Okay, let's go. So yeah, that was a nice little story, and got to learn why Phoenix became a defense attorney. Speaking of why Phoenix be became a defense attorney, hello, Edgeworth. December 27th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. You look as grim as always. <laughs> um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In fourth grade? Lunch money. Oh, oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple, to a fault even. Well, maybe, yeah. I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. We had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's ar argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know, it's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. 
after weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth, what you're saying is true. You're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now is no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Mph. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Sorry, I'm not sure I can help you with that. And of course, the running gag, smile for the camera, and a real pro, this guy. This guard monitors the visitor's room, he hasn't moved an inch since I came in. A real pro. I feel like they slightly change that dialogue each time. December 27th. Gord Lake Park entrance. Hey, pal! Long time no see! Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal! Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Sh Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Eek. No one could go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. A funny thing is that when I'm uploading YouTube videos, I put those little eye cards in. You know the thing where in the top right corner, it'll link to something else. Like, I'll probably put something in right now. And when I'm going through videos, I can clearly tell at what points Gumshoe is on screen because the audio levels just expand like tenfold. December 27th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Huh? Steel Eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's been too busy with a trial to show up for work. December 27th. Boat rental shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. <laughs> I know that clearing of the throat anywhere. <laughs> Hello. Who might? What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg. This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm, if you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Edgeworth was doing here, anyway? Who knows? December 27th, Caretaker Shack. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Squawk! Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! Squawk! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello! Hello! Squawk! That wasn't me just repeating voice clips over and over again. That was actually me doing it three separate times. And ow, my voice. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? 1228! Squawk! Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't money in there. Ah. 
But hey, it keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Ah, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! Nick, why would Edgeworth's name be here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is your time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth, calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. So we found a pretty serious letter which seems to prove that the boat shop caretaker did exactly what we said that he did in court. And so, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and see what the heck's going on. We're going to see if, you know, we're just going to see what we can do because there's not much to do. We'll try to, maybe we'll try to take this to Edgeworth. We'll just go looking around, see if we could show this off to anyone and see if we can find out who wrote the letter. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.